Welcome back to Little Muffet Classic and part two of changing all the coolant hoses, flushing out the coolant system, and of course replacing the coolant in this 1991 Jaguar XJS V12. So I split this video up in two parts just because it would be way too long otherwise. And if you haven't seen the first video, I'll put a link to it up above and down below and check it out. You should really watch them in order. So in the first video, we flushed out the coolant system got all of the old coolant hoses off and laid out to the side. So I have all of those on the table here. We're going to have a look at those and I've laid out all the new ones next to it so we can compare them. And in this video we're going to of course prepare the block and all the connections, clean everything up, put all the new hoses back on with the hose clamps, fill up the system with coolant, check for leaks and hopefully there will be none, and you know burp out all the air out of the system as well. So you may be wondering, well, how much coolant is in one of these cars? It's quite a bit. It's close to about 20 to 21 liters when it's completely empty. It's very hard to get the system completely empty like that, but make sure you have about 20 liters of coolant to fill the thing up when you're doing this. So it's good to have some spare coolant laying around at home anyways. Um, maybe you're wondering which brand to use. I think I mean, most coolant is pretty much the same. Just follow your manual. Make sure you get phosphate-free coolant and make sure it's for aluminum engines as well. I like to get concentrated coolant and I mix it 50-50 with distilled water. You can usually always get pre-mixed coolant as well in many places. One other thing that says in the manual is that originally in the manual when it says to replace the coolant every two years, they also say that when you do it, you should pour two bottles of uh, bars, um, basically radiator leak stop. And I think that is a terrible idea. That is why many of these cars overheated when new because all of that every year or every second year sooner or later that's going to fill up uh, the radiator the heater cords lots of other places and that's why these things run hot uh, it's not a design thing there's nothing wrong with the design it's just if you keep pouring in as uh, you know coolant stop leak or whatever you want to call it two bottles of it every two years well pretty soon you're not going to have any coolant passages or anything like that so uh, it's just one thing I want to start out with. If you don't know the condition of your radiator and you're doing this, this is a great time to take that radiator out and maybe have it sent off to a shop and have them, you know, um, take it apart, replace the core, and put it back together with a new core. Because if you haven't done that uh, since the car has been new and it's been serviced uh, by Jaguar or the previous owners have followed the manual, it's probably going to be completely full up with crud. Uh, anyways, just go uh, over to the car. Let's check what happened since last time and um, yeah, finish up this service. Now I've removed every single last coolant hose off the engine. I've laid everything up here on the table and I've put all the new hoses next to them just to make sure I had a new one in the kit for everything. I also took the bypass cross over here, had some flaking paint on it and these are prone to rusting so I took all the paint off and it was just you know some flaking paint, tiny bit of surface rust but no pitting that went through so I just sanded it, gave it a shot of paint the same goes for um, the expansion tank over there. Have a look at that one, they're prone to rusting as well. This one is only two years old, so I'm um, not even gonna remove it and check it. I know that's fine. So yeah, I just laid out everything here, made sure I have all the hoses. I kept all the hose clamps with the ones I had. They're the original hose clamps to the car, and they all look to be in really nice shape. There's nothing wrong with them. I had no leaks anywhere, so I'm going to actually clean all them up just with a rag and some WD-40 and they'll look pretty much like new. If I do notice that any of them don't want to tighten up when I put them back, I will replace them with new ones. I always have a lot of hose clamps at home. One last thing though that I need to do just to make sure that everything is going to be fine or actually two things. One of them is you see all these pipes up here and there is a banjo fitting there. That's all, you know, part of the air bleed system, get all the air out. And it's really prone to these getting all blocked up. So what I like to do is just get compressed air, just blow through them all and, you know, make sure you get flow through them. I mean, these don't look really bad at all. They don't really look blocked at all. If yours do look really blocked, then, you know, take them off completely, clean them off. Uh, if they're really terrible, then... Of course replace them and then you can have it look in here too but these don't seem blocked at all and there's hardly any debris in this cooling system so I'm just going to blow them out with compressed air and that should be fine. One last thing that's really important that whenever you're fitting um, hoses back especially if it's on an aluminum block like this one have a look at everything and make sure that you clean off some sandpaper like you see 
even here on the radiator. I already cleaned this off a little bit just so you get a nice tight seal with that new hose. I have this one left to do, so all I'm going to do is see here. Grab a little bit of sandpaper and try just one handed, just with camera on the other hand. But all I do is basically move it back and forth. This, this is some 400 grit paper, that's pretty much enough. Uh, if it's really, really badly pitted, you could, of course, you know, go down to 100 grit or something. So, yeah, I'm not going to finish it perfectly right now, but just clean it off back and forth so you get a nice clean surface here with no pitting on it so that the hose will seal nicely with the hose clamp. So I'm going to do that and then now it's time to start fitting the hoses. Since this is such a tight engine bay, it's pretty vital to fit hoses in a certain order. So you start from the bottom and work your way up, especially in the front. Uh, in the back it doesn't really matter. You can start with the hoses that go to the heater valve over there because that's just you know different from everything else. But up front where a lot happens, I would start with the lower radiator hose. Once that is on, I would do the crossover hoses, the three of them here. Put that pipe back in place. You can do these ones a little later if you want to. And then working my way up, I do the uh, top hoses right and left. And after that, I do all the small hoses around and um, all the small hoses down by the radiator, by the expansion tank over here, I mean, and just work my way up. And that's really the easiest way to do it. So start with the bottom hose and work your way up. Uh, what I like to use just to make sure things slide on nicely, so just I use just a little bit of normal Vaseline. Just take a tiny, tiny bit on you know, inside my finger. Let's see if I can do this one-handed with a hose here. And I mean, I'm using a very, very small amount, but just you know, a little bit on the inside of the hose, just helps it slip on. And yeah, remove any piece of you know stickers, anything on the hoses like this. And before you um, put them on, just just compare them to the old one. Make sure that they're pretty much the same size that they will go on. And of course, don't forget to put the hose clamps on the new hose before you fit it. Cause you'll be pretty annoyed if you have to pull it off to put the hose clamps back on. So I'm gonna start with a few hoses now down in the bottom of the engine, which were really difficult for me to film. So I'm gonna put on the bottom hose and put on the crossover pipe and a few other things. And then when I'm back on camera, we'll do the top hoses together and a few of the other hoses are easier to film. A little update, a few hoses have been fitted. The lower radiator hose is in place, and still need to put the clamps, or the clamps are on the hose, but still need to tighten them up in place. And yes, that hose is, it's really terrible to get on. Uh, the trick to, at least on the XJS, is to, you know, snake it down through here and up, making sure it goes the right way around all these belts. It's pretty obvious where it fits. Don't put it all the way on the radiator, just make sure it's like resting in that hole, and that will sort of help it keep its way up here then I put one arm down through here and one arm here underneath the power steering pump and up and then you can just get your hands on it barely and sort of push it up into place if you put some lubricant on there like Vaseline they will slide up really easily and then you just do up the hose clamps uh, on the XJ12 you can do a lot of this underneath you don't have the front spoiler down here that you have on the XJS it's a little bit easier on the XJ12 you have a little bit more space uh, but on the XJS it's pretty tight and about halfway through doing it uh, you'll probably get a cramp and you'll totally regret replacing the hoses on your V12. And then I've also done the heater hoses up here which are also a little bit terrible. So you have the outlet hose there, underneath there you can't even see it. But down there you have the hose that goes under all of this into the heater valve and then you have the hose there that goes over there. If you have kind of big hands like I do, uh, it's just really quick to remove this crossover pipe. It goes over, let's see, it sits here and there. You just remove that, another hose that goes to it, and I just disconnect a few electrical connections here, just so I won't you know, pull any wires. And it's just, you get a little bit more space. So I'm gonna put this back on and hook up a few other things. Now we'll move over to the front of the engine. We'll do the coolant crossover pipe, the bypass pipe, and then it's pretty much just the small hoses up at the front and the uh, two upper radiator hoses. Things are moving along nicely. So the hose clamps are on, on the bottom hose, or they were on before but they were tightened. One over there, and one, well, yeah, down there somewhere you can't really see. Got the hoses on for the bypass, one there, one right over here, 
and one over there by the air pump right over there. So now I'm going to grab the bypass pipe and we'll put that in place. And after that, it's pretty much just the top hoses and a few other small hoses. Then we're ready to start filling the system with coolant again. And we're down to the last hose, which we're going to do together. Uh, I tried to film some of the other ones, but it's kind of fiddly over here. My hands just kept getting in the way and it was really useless film. But the top hose is in place over here. What's really nice on the XJS, which you'll see in a bit, is there is a hole over here to get a screwdriver in for the hose clamps. That's really nice. All the small hoses up here are new. The crossover is in place along with all the new hoses for that. A nice tip is if you have a freshly painted crossover pipe like I do, remove the housing here for the uh, PVC. Just two bolts here and you can take that off and you get a lot more like space to get that in there without scratching it. Also, it's a good time to clean this out. I've already made a video and I'll link it up above. A good way to clean this out and it will get gunked up, especially if you don't do any long mileage and of course it's a lot. This will get gunked up and it's a good time to clean that out as well. Put the air filter back on this side. Uh, so let's go on over to the other side, I'll set up the camera. We'll do the last hose together and then we'll start filling the whole system with coolant. So here's the last hose, it's the top hose that goes on this side. So all I've done to prepare it is I took off the sticker. There's one, uh, I believe it was on this side. So now I'm gonna take the Vaseline. I'm not using a big amount, just a little bit. It helps everything slide on and you don't damage the inside of the hose when you slide it on just to prevent any leaks. Now that's ready. I have the hose clamps here. These are the ones I took off. I just cleaned them off with some W40 in my hand with a rag and they turned out really nice. And then I just turned them back and forth a few times just to make sure that they work nice and smoothly. A nice tip is to get a socket, a small one that fits on here. The original ones are six millimeters. A lot of aftermarket ones are eight millimeters or seven, but it's a lot better to do it with a socket than with a straight screwdriver. So here's where the hose is supposed to go between the thermostat house and the radiator over there. So I like to just hold it in place so I kind of see where it goes. Then I have a look at the hose clamps and see where's the best place to put them so they're easy to get to and that they don't, you know, catch on to anything else. So I want this one like so. And the one over here, I won't be able to reach it with a screwdriver so I want it that way on. So. I'll take it over here and I'll start just getting it onto the radiator. And you see slides on really nice and easily. And then because you have the Vaseline on there, you can turn it really easily to get the right angle. And that's sliding on really nicely as well. Once I'm happy with the placement of the hose, I can start tightening up the hose clamps. So let's start with the one back here in the thermostat house. And you know, there's nothing really special to it. Like I said, it's nice to use a socket. And just make sure that you're on a good part of the thermostat house and tighten it up just pretty snug like that. And here you see that nice hole so you can get to the clamp up here on the radiator. And you don't have to tighten anything crazy. I often find that after a few warm ups or a few heat cycles, you can go around and just tighten all of them, maybe like half a turn more. You can kind of feel that they've loosened up a little bit. And that's it. Now we can fill everything with coolant. On the HEV12, you have two places to fill coolant. One in the middle over here, where I put the funnel, the crossover pipe, and you have over there at the expansion tank as well. On the earlier pre-HE, the fuel injected ones, you only have a fill at the expansion tank over there. The expansion tank's a little different on those. You have a big hose at the bottom and that fills the whole system. And then you have an air bleed over there on the left-hand side. Here it bleeds itself through all the lines over here on top of the radiator. So you fill in both places. As instructed in the owner's manual, I'm using a quality coolant that is phosphate free. And this is concentrate here. So I'm gonna mix it 50-50 with distilled water and that will give a freeze guarantee until about negative 36 degrees celsius which is plenty cold enough but the best part is also it helps with corrosion in the engine so i'm going to start by filling up here at the crossover pipe until that is pretty much all the way up to the top 
Then I'll fill up the expansion tank as well. And then we can start up the car. The whole system holds about 20 to 21 liters of coolant, but you won't get all that in at once, and maybe you haven't gotten all of the old coolant out. But I filled up about 16 liters or so now, so it actually started almost flowing out of the expansion tank over there. The way to check the level on one of these when everything is finished uh, is a little bit odd because there's no see-through header tank that you can see a minimum and maximum. But the correct way to do it is with a cold engine to remove the cap on here. You can put your finger down there and about three inches down, sort of where it is right now or seven centimeters about, you should feel the water level. If it's there, so at the bottom of your finger, there, the water level is correct. If it's not, uh, you fill it up until you're at that level and then you should be correct. So now I'm going to of course start up the engine to bleed out any air. I'm going to put the two caps back. I'm going to start it up. I'm just going to let it run for a minute or so. Make sure there are no leaks. I'm going to turn it off. Carefully open the caps up and just add any water that's been moved around the system. I mean not all the air is going to go out in one minute but some of it's going to start moving around. Around the heater core and such. Fill it up. Then we're going to put the caps back on. And then just going to let it run until it fully, fully warms up. Check for leaks again, make sure there are none. And then I'm going to let everything fully cool down again. And then I can check the level when everything's cold again. Now both the caps are on, but before you start up the engine, since you maybe had this belt off or the AC and that you had the crossover off, make sure that the AC belt doesn't touch the crossover. I mean, it's normal for it to be very close, but I mean, I can still get my, almost get my pinky between there. And the same goes for down here. So just make sure it doesn't rub on there before you start up the engine. Okay, let's start it up. All right, I'm gonna go out and see if there are any leaks. Hope you can hear me over the camera, but I don't see any major leaks so far. Everything seems to be going well. And yeah, those are just some old a little guy spilled when I filled up the system, but yeah, nothing new at the moment. I'll let it run for a minute. We'll turn it off and check the level. Also, make sure that you set the heater to hot and just the fan on low, just to make sure you have the water circulating through the heater core as well. After a minute of running, I carefully first remove the cap on the expansion tank. There's already means some pressure in there, so remove that very slowly. I mean, the coolant's not hot yet, at least not boiling or anything, but just remove that carefully. Then I'll have a look in here, move that as well. And the level is, I mean, it's down a tiny, tiny bit. So I'm just going to fill that up again to the correct level or probably fill it up here to the top. Put on both caps and then we'll run the engine up to operating temperature and check for leaks. All right, and that's it for this video. Normally, I would go for a test drive once I found out that there are no leaks, which there are none. However, uh, summer seems to have disappeared here and it's thunderstorms and rain and terrible weather out. And this is a... The car I like to take out on nice days. It's not something you take out in the rain, so that will have to wait for another day. I let it sit here in the idle with the door open, of course, until everything is fully warmed up. And I haven't seen any leaks anywhere. I've felt around everywhere in all the hoses, and it's really good if you're, um, you have bare hands. You can usually like swipe a finger or so underneath a hose, and even if you can't feel it, you can always see on your hand if there's a little bit coolant or something. But I haven't found any leaks yet. I'm gonna let everything completely cool down, and then of course I'll check the level before I take it on a test drive. So that's three inches from the middle of that crossover pipe. So anyways, if you like this video, please leave a comment down below, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a lot. And until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Lumify Classic. I'll see you soon.